Hey guys, this is my 3D printed linear actuator with full feedback system. First of all, let me show you um, how it operates. So I'm powering it up using an Arduino and a 5 volt power bank. So I've loaded the default servo testing code on the Arduino, the default one which is um, included in the Arduino software. It is basically commanding this servo motor to go back and forth 0 to 180 degree and 180 degree to 0. This whole assembly is um, 3D printed. Each part is 3D printed except the servo motor of course. Um, you will only need the 3D printed parts and the servo. This is the potentiometer which is inside the servo motor if you've ever opened the servo motor this kind of potentiometer you will find inside so i just took the potentiometer out put it on the top of the assembly this rack and pinion assembly so that the feedback can be provided to the motor and it can operate uh, fully uh, you know we can get a full positional control on this motor I have used a 25 tooth gear here which has a 10 tooth gear on top of it which is driving a 25 tooth gear again which is connected to the feedback potentiometer. So it's nearly a 2 is to 1 uh, reduction gear so that we can get longer travel moves using the same potentiometer. Otherwise a normal servo uh, would only operate 0 to 180 degree that means half a rotation of uh, the main output drive shaft so half a rotation would have uh, provided us a total travel um, distance of around 50 mm while this whole assembly here's my vernier caliper total rack is 94 mm so we get nearly 94 mm travel using uh, using the reduction gear otherwise we would have gotten only nearly uh, 45 mm or something like that i calculated earlier so this is the main advantage of a feedback system and reduction gear on a linear actuator system i will be uploading the 3d files for these on thingiverse or something within a few days because um, I will be putting some mounting holes on uh, this assembly, this bracket here. Right now it cannot be mounted on anything. This is just a proof of concept. And uh, I can also show you how uh, is this thing uh, constructed or assembled. This is the 3D model of the linear actuator. I have designed it in Fusion 360. Here's the model. This is the slidable rack and the main driving pinion. This is the socket here for uh, the potentiometer which will come out of the SG90 servo. It will be fitted here and uh, this gear will be driving it. I can show you each part individually. Let's see the main driving gear first. This gear will be driven by the servo motor. If I hide the servo motor right here below this gear, you can see I have made a socket for uh, fitting the servo attachment 
that comes with the SD90 servo motor. You'll just have to cut that arm off nearly in the middle and that arm will get press fitted inside this gear. No need to glue it, super glue or whatever. It will fit pretty snug so you won't have to apply any kind of glue to it and the servo motor will be able to drive it perfectly this gear is 25 tooth and above it is a 10 tooth gear directly attached to it this 10 tooth gear will be driving the potentiometer feedback gear let me show you the potentiometer gear yeah so this gear will be driving the potentiometer it's a 25 tooth gear as i said it will be driven by this with 10 tooth gear and this 25 tooth gear will be driving the potentiometer which will be connected to the servo motor for the feedback for this whole system and here's the rack this rack is nearly 94 mm in length which is pretty much enough for uh, some general experiments or um, um, hobbyist kind of work let me show you the full assembly together this is the complete assembly and i can show you how it works I'll be driving the joint, the main gear here. The main gear will be driven by the servo motor. And obviously you can turn the servo motor clockwise or anti-clockwise. The whole rack will be driven by nearly one point two five times the rotation of the main gear and the feedback gear will be driven much slowly because it's driven by the 10 tooth gear as the feedback gear is 25 tooth and smaller gear is 10 tooth so the reduction ratio will be 5 is to 2 This is done so that the rack can travel much longer distance as compared to if it was driven by the servo motor directly. Right now I operated uh, this mechanism using an Arduino. Here's the Arduino which had the servo code in it. So it's just moving back and forth. You cannot see the positional accuracy of uh, this mechanism using the Arduino right now. I will show you its precision using this servo tester you might be familiar with these servo testers so let me rewire it oh uh, you might be wondering how i connected the servo motor to the icsp port on the arduino well i can show you this is the servo connector i've just swapped the signal wire and the power supply wire between each other so uh, by swapping these wires you can plug it directly on the Arduino here like this this is the ICSP port and uh, the pinouts for the ICSP ports are like the top right is uh, VCC and uh, bottom right is the ground that is the earth and the middle one is the MOSI pin which is also the 11th pin on the Arduino. So if you put the servo testing code and modify it to attach the servo on the 11th pin, you can directly connect it to the ICSP header here just by swapping the pins on uh, these this connector of servo motors. For connecting it to the standard servo tester, I'll again have to swap those two wires. I've uh, swapped the wires again back to the normal as a normal servo motor connector 
here's the servo tester and uh, I will connect it here like that now I'm gonna power it on uh, using a power bank the servo tester is currently in mod 1 there are three mods on these servo testers the first mod is the manual mod where you can control the servo motor using this potentiometer so let's see how it works So as you can see this is really smooth assembly and it's working quite smoothly actually and I didn't expect it that. You can move it around real fast and really accurately. You can see how precise it is. without using these reduction gears it wasn't uh, possible to get this much movement using just a simple SG90 servo motor I've removed the sticker on this servo motor so you you can see that it's empty inside the potentiometer actually lies here on this part of the servo motor I've removed the potentiometer and put it on top of this assembly and the three wires just run parallelly to the solder board to the PCB here and I've soldered these wires inside I can show you how a servo motor looks from the inside this is a typical Tower Pro SG90 9G servo motor so if you open it up from the bottom I'm removing the top too you can see this tiny PCB inside which is connected with these main signal and power wires When you remove the PCB, you can see these two white wires connect to the motor, main motor. So these one you should leave connected. And these three wires, these three red wires, are the potentiometer wires which we need to cut and remove the potentiometer from there. Yeah, so you can see the potentiometer inside from the top so we just need to remove this potentiometer and uh, rewire it on top of this assembly that way we get full feedback and we get very precise positional control over the linear actuator so that's it guys let me know if you like it uh, like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more random things, more 3D printed random engineering things. If you need any more details on uh, this, uh, comment below the video.